Welcome to FOD Overdrive, the podcast that keeps you up on your Friday nights. We're a three-man team that also has a weekly conservative terrestrial program from 3 to 5 p.m. on 94.9 News Now, WJJF in Connecticut, Long Island, and Rhode Island called Freedom on Deck. To live stream the station and listen to our program, go to freedomondeck.com and click Listen Live or listen to all of our back shows of Freedom on Deck and FOD Overdrive. On the site, you can get daily updated news, contributions from Chet Martin, that's me, Lee LC from the Lee LC Show, Julio Rivera from the Reactionary Times, and Alex Newman from the New American. I'm Chet Martin, joined by Brian Bro. Brian, say hello to everybody. Hello, everyone out there in podcast world. And C.V. Burton, tell everybody how delicious this show is going to be. It's so delicious that you're not even going to need dessert. Amen, brother. Well, listen, um, to get a little serious right now, this past week, President Trump, his family, and his administration traveled to Portsmouth as part of a two-day commemoration of the 75th anniversary of D-Day, the largest amphibious assault ever, and the turning point for Allied forces in recapturing Western Europe from Nazi Germany in World War II. The beaches of Normandy stained with Allied and American blood forever. It's a reminder that we can never allow fascism to rise again. We must protect our borders and sovereignty in the face of all evil that confronts us. CV, before we start the show... I'd like you to play President Trump reading FDR's prayer for D-Day as our troops storm the beaches of Normandy. Please. You got it. Almighty God, our sons, pride of our nation, this day have set upon a mighty endeavor, a struggle to preserve our republic, our religion, and our civilization, and to set free a suffering humanity. They will need thy blessings, for the enemy is strong. He may hurl back our forces, but we shall return again and again. And we know that by thy grace, and by the righteous of our cause, our sons will triumph. Some will never return. Embrace these, Father, and receive them, the heroic servants, into thy kingdom. And, O Lord, give us faith. Give us faith in thee, faith in our sons, faith in each other, and faith in our united crusade. Thy will be done, almighty God. Amen. All right, guys. So coming back, I just want to get a little uh, reaction from you guys. You know, it was it was a tumultuous trip for President Trump. You would think that politics would be put aside, but no, they couldn't. You had the radical London mayor, Sadiq, Sadiq Khan, coming out and throwing shade on the president's visit. But, you know, he handled it with class and dignity and respect, and I thought that everything that the mainstream media threw at him really backfired. You know, they, Brian, they tried to say there's thousands of people in the streets with this Trump baby balloon, and they are so against the president of the United States visiting Britain. When I saw it on the live news feed, Brian, it wasn't thousands. It looked more like a 300 pack of rats to me. And it was amazing (laughs) to see on another news feed, they had the Brexiteers and they were pro Trump and there were thousands. It's amazing how the media gives disinformation to make this guy look so bad, right? Of course. Anything to to discredit this president. I mean, you know, look, (laughs) the best part about the whole protest was. The pro-Trump woman who came up and slashed the Trump baby balloon. Yes, yes. 
<laughs> that was the best. It was. She's like, "Oh, is this your balloon?" Oh, slash. <laughs> uh, yes, it, it was. It was great. You got, if you was. haven't seen that video, you gotta see that video. But I mean, look. I mean, there are. I would probably have to say that there. Now that there has been two years of Trump, I would have to say, and I would probably place a very hefty bet that there are more British people that favor this president than there are that are opposed to this president. This president is a symbol, I believe, of the kind of leader that so many uh, Britain, uh, British people want. You know, and they I think they yearn for it. And that's why you saw thousands in favor of Trump rather than a few hundred that were opposed. But CV, the media just won't give him credit. But he went there in order to pay respect to those that gave their ultimate sacrifice over 9000 Americans only on the on the storming the beaches of Normandy. Right. But the left just can't put the politics aside, can they? Nah, it's all propaganda, and it's really an assault on you and I and his supporters. Um, but, you know, I have to say something. I thought it was extremely gracious how the Queen received and honored the, our great president, and I thought Melania looked great. She's never gonna, I know. She's never going to grace the covers of any of these rag magazines. Uh, so I think we should all post pictures of Melania as often as possible because she is... Beautiful. She's a supermodel. She's poised and elegant, and uh, she's she's much more dignified and beautiful than even Jackie O was back in the day, which was a little bit before my time. Well, I you know I have to tell you, the Queen she looked very satisfied that this first lady didn't have a penis. <laughs> um, she she was ex I, I could tell in the pictures she was checking out her front side to make sure that this one didn't have a ding dong <laughs> like the last dump truck that was in the Oval Office. You know, Michael. <laughs> I don't know. You know, she's ninety three years old, so I don't think she was. I don't think she was aware that she was looking down. It's just that she's so short. <laughs> you know, she's like she only comes up to like Melania's belly button anyway. <laughs> No, she was checking for twig and berries because uh, I'm sure last time, last time, last time that dump truck uh, went over there and they went there in 2011 or 2013 was when they invited the illustrious Barack Obama and Michelle to perform in the same ceremony. And, uh, you know, that's when they met her. You know, the interesting part is, guys, and I want to get into the show real quick here, but there's only been three presidents to do this. Um, and that was Trump, Obama, and uh, Bush to do this over the last 30 years, I think it was, or maybe huh. 40 years. So only the three presidents that have done this, and Trump got the opportunity. Reagan never did it. Um, I want to say Bush Jr. has not done it. And it was just Trump, Obama, and Bush Sr., over the last 40 years. Well, you kind can, of impressive, right? You could tell the queen really likes Donald Trump. You know, it, what, her speech was very sweet. And, you know, she mentioned the fact that his family's from Scotland. Yeah. And she really respects him. And I think the polls in England say 35% are pro-Trump. But I think it's much more than that. Uh, polls are very skewed these days. And, you know, the polls are put out by the BBC. Let's not forget that over there. It's just like hearing something from this, from CNN over here. Yeah. Well, yeah, and exactly. And not only that, but how much is the media, um, you know, bashing our president to the British people as well? Right. Oh, that, that constantly happens. Of course it does. And thousands showed up to show support for President Trump in England. Thousands waving flags and, uh, and then only a handful showed up to protest against him and guess what got reported and guess what didn't get reported well, i can well, tell you what got well that's what, what we got that's reported what we were just saying we were just well, saying that right. that um that that basically the media put out this false idea that there were thousands of people protesting against trump and there weren't 
There was a, I watched it on the live stream. Right. I watched it myself. There were probably 300 people there. It looked like, to me, like a conservative rally in Hartford, Connecticut. That's what it looked like to me. Manufactured. It was pathetic. Manufactured. The and they didn't cover the thousands that showed up that were pro-Trump. They didn't show that at, at all. No, but, you, I w you, but I watched it. Okay. Do, you guys re do you guys remember a couple of years ago when, when the Brexit thing was going on? They had a pro-Brexit rally, and, and thousands and thousands of people were in the streets, and they were chanting Trump. Oh yeah. yeah, you remember yeah, that yeah, video? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We actually had we put that out on Freedom on Deck. That actually got taken off uh, by Facebook the other day from uh, our page. Yeah, yep. well, two two years later, I got a message from Facebook that said that their uh, their sources say that Freedom on Deck's page is a mixture. Half of it's comedy. They don't even know how to take a joke. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is the thing, liberals are so fucking uptight, it's not even funny. Like, you know why they say it's a mixture? Because we post stuff from Babylon Bay. Oh. That's why. But I don't give a shit. I'm sick of caring. You know, if they're going to take me down, <laughs> take me down. But I'm going to go down swinging. I'm not going to curtail what I'm saying in order to fit your radical left-wing agenda. Guys, Good. we got to get we got to get into uh, a topic before we start... Uh, getting off the rails here i wanted to talk to you about this america is currently facing a massive border crisis it was just released uh wednesday the cpb announced that we are experiencing a full-blown emergency at the southern border apprehensions are up over one-third since last month but most are being released and congress uh should pass some laws President Trump can't do that, but we know Congress won't. And he, here's the thing. House Democrats, along with seven Republicans, responded to it uh, by voting to pass an amnesty bill. And this was done on Tuesday with absolutely no border security money or asylum system reforms. The final vote was 237 to 187. H.R. 6 or the American Dream, the Dreamers and the Promise Act of 2019 would extend amnesty to at least 2.5 million illegal immigrants who were either brought to the United States as minors or have been temporary protected status. That number is well beyond the estimated 700,000 to 800,000 total DACA recipients. This would take the form of green card status with the path to citizenship. The dream and now the dream and the promise act is urgent for our country, Speaker Nancy Pelosi said. The bill's introduction in March before trying to sell the legislation under a few lines from a Ronald Reagan speech. However, critics point out that the legislation would do absolutely nothing to address the border enforcement, blah, blah, blah. But here's what's going on here now. What they're doing here is giving blanket amnesty due to Congress. Now, the issue is we have record numbers coming in through the country. So, of course, now what you're going to see are children being used as props in order to get into the country, whether they're the parents or not. Just, and by the way, I wanted to mention this. Just because the child is yours does not mean you're an upstanding citizen. Okay, liberals? That does not mean that the person trying to obtain entry into the United States is somebody that aligns themselves with our values just because they actually have a child. I don't know. I, I, I don't know how that works, but but in my opinion. So here's what happens. From what I read up on in one of the articles in the New American magazine, which sponsors our show, the people that come in with these children are being given court dates. Court dates that are because of the flood that has happened over the last month, which is up a third from the month prior. They are being told to go to these courts and to show up a year and a half later. The compliance, the compliance rate of these illegals that are coming in and told to go back to these courts is under 10%. So nobody is showing up. Yeah. Now, there have been over 300,000 illegal immigrants over the past six months released in the United States of America. 
in Texas, Arizona, and Florida. All red states. We have to do something now, Brian. Hey, I mean, look, you got to read between the lines, man. You know, that's something my dad's uh, you know always told me, you know, read between the lines. Hey, if if only 10% are showing up for their court date, that's the percentage of people that really are seeking asylum in this country. Right. The other 90% that aren't showing up don't give a fuck about our country or our laws. Because if they did, they'd show up. But they don't. So that's you got to read between the lines. That's the percentage of people that are really are probably the true asylum seekers, people that really are are running here uh, for the lives. The other 90 percent aren't. And that's the part that really should upset most people. So now we're going to we're going to flood this country. And it's and now that they put this legislation what do you think that's going to signal to people that are down south that are in mexico guatemala el salvador honduras uh panama ecuador i mean it, it, the list goes on what do you what do you think that's going to signal to those people to come on down come on down i mean bob barker might as well have presented the bill himself it's See, ridiculous th- it's disgusting CV, thank God the president over this past week has met with the Mexican government. We need to do something now. The Democrats are becoming really dangerous with their policies. Well, people forget Trump declared a national emergency over this border situation. And, um, you know, and, and he proposed putting tariffs on Mexico if they don't stop. And then you have, like, McConnell... And a handful of his whole cohorts saying they're they're standing against the tariffs. Yeah, D- those stupid idiots. You don't say you're standing against the tariffs if you don't want Trump to use the tariffs. The idea it, it's a threat. It's to make Mexico uh, s- stop the illegal crossings, which they have the power to do. And uh, if if they're against it allow the threat to work but what you what they're doing is they're they're encouraging more illegal immigration because yeah. they're, because they're acting like there's not a un, united front in our government which there isn't and that just sends a mixed signal and it's it's absolutely absurd and just the other day wednesday uh border the border patrol captured more than a thousand immigrants in one day crossing the border and in May, it was a record number, about 130,000 crossing the border in May alone. So this is a real serious issue. And McConnell and those other rhinos are uh, just a thorn in the side of the whole national emergency. They are trying to change our demographic. Oh, like yeah. I said, in Florida, they wanted to release 200,000. Like I said, the totals go up, they say 300,000. I think it's a lot more over the last six months that have been released. And notice they're all going to red states, like I said. That's what they want to do. They don't want to send them to New York. They don't want to send them to Connecticut. And that's why President Trump said, let's send them to the sanctuary cities. They don't want that because that doesn't change the demographic of the areas that they want to affect. Um, Hillary was just at a speaking engagement. and She was talking in Texas, actually. She was at U- in Houston. And maybe it was her failed tour where you can get tickets for like two dollars. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and that, you know, and and uh, what she was saying was it's important that Texas turns blue because once we turn Texas blue, it'll never turn back. And that's how she said it. And, you know, <laughs> she as much as I hate her, she's got a point. If you start flooding these red countries and red districts with illegals that do vote, despite what the Democrats and the liberals tell you, believe me, they do, it'll change the effect and cause of the state. Maybe not this year. Maybe not in 2020. Let's look past 2020. Does let, Let's say Trump wins by a landslide. Okay, he wins by a landslide. But if they continue down this path of bringing in people, passing blanket amnesty, all the children that come in are able to be American citizens. 
The problem is with with kids coming in, dreamers as they like to call them, they're raised in a household that's probably greatly socialist. Yes, they're Christians. Yes, they believe in certain things. No, some of them are gangsters. But most of them probably are not. But the problem is they're from countries where the household is reliant on the government. And that's why this is done. Mm -hmm. We can run into Absolutely. some real major roadblocks here. Listen, I think by 20, I would say by 2040, this country will be at an apex of saying goodbye to our constitutional republic and saying hello to a democratic socialist, uh, if you will, um, type of government. And, I you know, and we could and we could see it, it progressing that way. Um, you know, it's up to us. I mean, it's up to us. You know what? I mean, if if we really love this country, it's up to us as Americans to to educate these people that are illegals. I mean, hell, if they're going to be here, I mean, let's tell them why the freedoms that we love and that we hold dear um, are freedoms that they should love and hold dear. You know, hey, fight fire with fire. You know, they might come from a socialist country, but maybe if they if they fell in love with the fact that they have that they have certain freedoms and that they uh, if they do get true amnesty, if they do have a true pathway to citizenship, then that citizenship also includes uh, the Second Amendment. It also includes uh, the freedom of speech. It also includes that, you don't you know, like they don't have to be afraid to speak out uh, uh, against their government right now in Venezuela, in Venezuela. Look at what uh, is happening there. I mean, those people are, are afraid of the government. They're still fighting, but they're afraid of that government. Yeah. Um, listen, I'm going to move on to the next topic because uh, we already are 20 minutes into the show. So let's get a word from the sponsor. Listen, folks, are you getting frustrated with the trusted conservative sites and magazines turning left? Do you really want to read Bill Crystal in the National Review as the weekly standard supporting our president enough? I don't think so. Instead, go to thenewamerican.com and get your subscription to the New American Magazine. For both the magazine and online subscriptions, you can read pro-Trump, truly conservative contributions from our good friend to the show, Alex Newman, who was just on last week, Bill Hahn, and so many others. Go to newamerican.com and sign up. I mean, listen, be part of the be part of the solution, not part of the problem, right, Brock? That's what I say. <laughs> All right, so this story is cray cray. All right, this story <laughs> offends me so much to my core because it's about a seven year old child. My youngest is seven. And I'm just going to get into it. We had a little issue on Twitter. I don't know if you guys saw it, but somebody by the name of Atheist Satanist. Uh, got upset because I said I'd like to unload my 590 into this son of a bitch's chest. And uh, we got into it. But but let me just get into the story, okay? As of Wednesday morning, nearly 100,000 people, all of them left-wing Democrats, and admittedly having a history of hating conservative children, had liked a cartoon tweet about running over a 7-year-old Trump supporter. Posted on Monday by Zach Fox, an unfunny internet comedian, that's my words, not this article's, and illustrator, the tweet depicted Benton Stevens, a seven-year-old Austin boy, who rose to fame after he raised thousands of dollars for triple amputee Air Force veteran Brian Colfidge, and he deserves respect for that. We Build the Wall is his project where he sells hot chocolate. On the left side of the tweet, which can be seen below, was a photo of Stevens at his hot chocolate stand, while on the right was a cartoon illustration of a man driving his vehicle straight towards Stevens' stand. Uh, CV, I'll send you the picture. Can you post that? Yep, yep, yep. Okay, I'll send that for you. Besides liking and retweeting Fox's post, hundreds of additional leftists rushed to their keyboards to type approving messages. This guy's, 
this guy wins the internet today, folks, said KLMC. Uh, somebody else put a stupid meme up. Somebody else put another stupid meme up. Why? Because while shockingly, especially given that Fox Target was a child, his tweet wasn't necessarily that much more offensive than some of the memes that President Donald Trump and his son Donald Trump Jr. have posted over the years, according to the leftists. They said, remember when Trump Jr. retweeted a meme two years ago that showed his father as Top Gun fighter pilot blowing up the jet targeted as CNN? Give me a break. First of all, <laughs> let, me, let me just say this before I go to you, Brian. First of all, this kid raised $20,000 for an Air Force veteran that was a triple amputee. And that right there should be, I mean, you know, he should get a Presidential Medal of Honor, in my opinion. And, I, and if you're listening, Mr. President, please give him one. Now, the second part of this is for the leftists to compare a video of Trump in Top Gun blowing up a CNN logo, a logo. Oh, my God, he blew up a logo. And then they also compared the video of uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin giving the CNN logo the stunner while Trump <laughs> ran in and shaved its head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, um, that, was, that was a great video great high quality but but love that one they're comparing this have you guys looked at this uh cartoon of the 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 car driving into this kid yes have you so, looked at it uh, it's disgusting it's disgusting and brian i looked at all these internet trolls and they're trying to say he's not a he's not he's not inciting violence by the way folks the tweet is still up. It is still up right now. Brian, well, you know, how, we just how a, crazy are they? Well, I'll tell you how crazy they are. Uh, we just had an 11-year-old little girl that got targeted and ran over by a crazy freaking lunatic leftist uh, and said that he ran her over because uh, uh, of the white. color of her skin, because she was white, not because she was on a Razor scooter or anything like that. Uh, that's how crazy they are. So, I mean, yeah, it might be a cartoon, but they really go out and fucking do this. I'm sorry. Right. I'm sorry. They really do. That's the, that's the, that's the point, you know, and uh, uh, it is inciting violence because uh, if somebody made a cartoon about people uh, down in Charlotte, uh, Charlottesville running over Antifa uh, or people in the streets, uh, oh, wait, that really did happen. Um, uh, that would be inciting violence, right? Right. By by the way, this con this comedian for everybody listening, his handle on Twitter is at Zach. That's spelled like Zach. Z a c k f o x. Zach Fox, and he's got a blue check mark, and he's still up there, and he's a black piece of you know what comedian. Sorry, I just have to say it. That's what he is. He's promoting violence against a little white kid. CV. Well, it's arguable that the guy who ran over the seven-year-old girl was inspired by this not funny comedian, you know, because it only happened just the other day. And um, you, might, you might be right. You know, and he, he purposely ran her over and then ran over to her and said, hey, we all have to die sometime before he fled the scene. So this is the this is what happens when propaganda gets out of control and and i think that um you know um las vegas was inspired by cnn and msnbc and they and that terrorist shooting that happened on that baseball field in washington dc was also inspired by those left-wing freaks well, I think the Vegas shooting also had radical jihadist ties to it. I think that one's a little different. I, I think he, I, I think he target. So. No, no, de no. It's definitely true because he had connections to them. I'm not going to get into this right now. He had connections to ISIS. He did. Yeah, don't don't muddy the waters. It, it does. It doesn't matter. He definitely targeted that audience for a reason, 
but me and you have different reasons on thinking of why. I believe he converted to Islam because his wife was Islamic. He sent her over to the Philippines when he when he did this. And if you look at the Philippines and look at their connections with uh, ISIS, you will find out that it is pretty deep. Yep. That guy converted to Islam. But his Facebook page was all full of left-wing propaganda. That doesn't mean that he wasn't no. in ISIS. I'm just saying it doesn't exclude the other thing either. No, but it can be both. Right. You see, you see, here's the thing. The left is so deranged right now that I believe they are connected to these terrorist groups. Yep. You Tell know, me you I'm might, wrong. You, 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 may, you may very well be right right there. But the guy who shot right, up right. the baseball field. I'm starting to believe it. The guy who shot up the baseball field in D.C. was a total left wing lunatic who thought Donald Trump, the only reason Donald Trump won was because of Russia. And where did he get that idea from? Hmm. Yeah, but what's the difference between a leftist that hates Israel, hates Christians, wants to kill them? Gee, that sounds a lot like Islam. Well, we already know they're connected to Islam. I mean, let's face it. Well, they're yeah, friends. I mean, friends. And when you look, and when you, and when you, right? I mean, come on. They don't. They don't denounce anything that Elon Omar or Rashida Tlaib have to say. They could say they could they could say the most disgusting, vile thing against Israel or or any Jew in Congress or in the streets. And get away with it. You have you have the left in the in Europe that is, I mean, just basically bending over to Islam. You had you, you, w there was a video that recently. It was um, uh, what's the square in London? There, I can't think of the name. But uh, the uh, they had a freaking Islamic call to prayer, and they're thousands and thousands i probably would even say maybe tens of thousands of muslims in the square all praying on prayer rugs with a call uh you know for the for the prayer you know it's it just sick sick brian, and that, they brian, are that, brian, brian that just happened in brooklyn not too long ago it may not have oh. been t ten thousand people but it was a lot yeah i saw it in the park yes yeah, well, it's sick. It's, it's, it's sick, right and, here. And, and it's happening. Are you kidding me? The, there's a North Carolina, uh, ca uh, I believe it's a mayor of a of a city in North Carolina that's a candidate right now. That's that is that that may win, uh, being mayor of this town down in Ca North Carolina, and she's a Muslim wearing the hijab. Man, there's another one that's uh, a teacher that they just hired on, uh, who who wears the hijab every day to the school, and she's teaching their kids great isn't it isn't there isn't there a separation of church and state the hijab is absolutely a symbol of their faith now if it, it, it how come christian teachers can't wear a nice cross necklace on their uh, uh you know uh, and and display that because they get told no you can't wear that this is a school well why the fuck can they wear the hijab because the diversity trainers don't want them promoting Christianity, CV. In France, they outlawed the hijab. Um, but I want to get back to this other thing. The reason why the left are allies with Islam is over their mutual enemy, the conservative patriot. And they each think that if they could, in their ideal world, if they could annihilate the conservative patriot, um, then they would be left to fight each other because the left would then you know, move to eliminate Islam, and Islam would move to eliminate the left. So right now they're friends, but if they, yeah, because if they ever succeeded in getting rid of us, they'd be at on. each other's throats. Hold on, and one CV's sec right, hold on. Though. Hold on one second. Hold on, hold on. Where did you see France outlawed the hijab? I, that's what I heard. No. Okay, you don't have no. to agree. No, no way. France has no-go zones. They have fucking jihadist communities. There's no way oh, that the hijab... Oh, I know they're totally liberal when it comes to Islam, but they, they outlawed the hijab in, in France. Maybe, maybe the burqa. Well, 
Maybe the burqa, burqa. Oh, maybe but that, not oh, the fucking what hijab. What's the difference that's between a meant. burqa and a hijab? The burqa conceals your entire face, and the hijab does not. All right, then it's the burqa. Right, right, I maybe used the right. wrong word. And I and, doubt they. And I doubt they banned that. France well, is. And, France is on their hands and knees getting fucked by the jihadists. I know that, but I'm just saying that even France outlawed the burqa. Well, I'll say this. I'll say. I'll say. I'm gonna. I'm gonna agree with CV on this. On this point, and that they, the left, thinks that they have an ally in in Islam and in in with Muslims. And I'll tell you right now, they're gonna find out real quick because everything. Think about everything that the left is for. Abortions, uh, homosexuality, transgenderism, this, yep. that, the other thing, blah, 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 blah. That is so far out of line with Islam. It is absolutely hysterical All right, when look, you think about it. I looked it up on Wikipedia just now, and it says the French ban on face covering. It's a law of 2010. Dash 1192 act prohibiting concealment of the face in public space. Is That's an act of parliament passed by the Senate of France on 14 September 2010. 2010. Yeah, I guarantee. Right. I, I guarantee you, they turned that back. They didn't, because it would I say. It. Yeah, but but what what it's <laughs> saying is is the full concealment. So the hijab does not conceal the face; it just covers the head. Right. Well, it, it doesn't matter if they if they ban the burqa. They they can't even. Arm themselves to fight these jihadists. <laughs> it you doesn't just had, you matter. Just had Notre Dame burnt to the ground. I mean, right. almost. It doesn't matter. Well, France is. They tried, France to, is they tried done. to overturn. They tried to. I know that. I'm just. I was just pointing out that even even France. I was making no, a point. I, I was making no, a, no, a, a pointed point that even France outlawed that, and and it, you know, Britain is more far gone than even France is. But anyway, they tried to. Uh, uh, overturn the law but it was upheld in 2014 that's all i'm saying okay okay no i wasn't saying that that you were wrong first it was the hijab and all i right, just said yeah, the right, i know i said I, the wrong I, word I, I just said that wow france is because france is as we know they've catered <laughs> to the jihadists in a way like 100%. no one else I know, even it's, even in the face of terror where they're walking down the street and blowing away people in outdoor restaurants and driving up down uh, on on sidewalks, running over people, they still yep. bring. They still want to bring in more "quote unquote" refugees, and we all know that the refugee crisis is a fake, phony fraud. And isn't it yeah. sad? Isn't it sad that we're talking about storming the beaches of Normandy, and now you see uh, Prime Minister Macaroni, and he's like, "We need to bring more in." Are you kidding me? You've got you've got elderly Jewish women and Jewish men getting murdered in the streets of France that the media does not talk about, and these nope. Muslims, these cockroaches, are killing them. And, and you know, and that's uh, you know to bring that up, you know, about Normandy, you know, like with Nancy Pelosi making the insensitive remarks trying to uh, compare climate change to uh, the men that stormed uh, Omaha Beach. You know, I mean, absolutely sick, you know, and and it, you're right. You know, this is this is the mockery that is being made of the millions of people that died fighting the greatest evil that our world has seen. Now, it now I believe we are going to be faced with a greater evil. I believe that is Islam. But the greatest evil that we have seen yet, and yeah. their lives are being made a mockery. That you know, think about the men that died that day, today, the seventy fifth anniversary. You know, those men, those men, and a lot of them, a lot of them were younger than eighteen, sixteen, seventeen. Lied about their ages to fight for their country because they were. They knew that they were basically fighting the greatest evil that had ever reared its head, yeah. Um, and their lives are being a, 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 a being made a mockery. And for the left stream media propaganda machine to 
call us Trump supporters and patriots Nazis every single day is the worst travesty of all because now they're making it okay for them to attack us and even run over little girls in the street. All right, well, listen, guys, we usually do four topics. We're only going to do three tonight because we're running out of time. I'm going to do the two commercials back to back, and then we're going to do our final topic. All right. Okay. Sounds so, good. So our new sponsors are a motorsports team. Midget Motorsports is a family owned and operated NASCAR modified team based out of East Hampton, New York. You'll see them full time at Riverhead Raceway, also part time schedule at the NASCAR Wheelin modified tour. Driver number four, Corey, who has entered full body car in the Charger division at Riverhead in 2012 and won Rookie of the Year and won a total of four races in four years. It's their fourth year in the modified division. The family, Brian Sr., Michael, Brian Jr., and Corey, rely on outside donations. If you're interested in helping this Trump supporting race team, contact Brian at the number 516-236-8498, or you can go to Freedom on Deck. Click on the race car, Corey's number four, and it'll tell you all the information right there. All profits go to Corey's ability to continue racing. You'll see the Freedom on Deck logo on the car. This season in Connecticut and Long Island, along with their Trump sticker and flag. The John Burt Society helped America elect President Reagan in 1980 and President Trump in 2016. They've rallied the conservative base for over 50 years. Go to JBS.org and join up and receive a good conservative group behind you. JBS has affiliates like the New American, American Opinion Foundation, Freedom Project Media, and Freedom Project Academy. Print membership is $87. Digital membership is only $47. Go there, JBS.org. You won't regret it. Tell them Freedom on Deck sent you. All right, guys, so this story is crazy. You guys remember that story out of Philadelphia, the Muslim school where the kids were chanting, chop the heads off the infidel, mm -hmm. uh, you know, let, let, let's pour their blood on the streets. This is Allah's will. Well, there's a scandal involving a child bride at this radical Philadelphia mosque, which is co-joined with this school where all this stuff happened. Um, according to Clarion Intelligence Network, sources aware of the investigations into the underage marriages that have taken place for years in this area with the church co line with this school. So last March, the victim, who was married at 14 and who is now 17, came forward with allegations of sexual assault against her with uh, by her husband. In a public video posted on Facebook, the young girl said both she and the, her 10-year-old sister were sexually abused by her husband, Rajman Sanders. Sanders, I don't, I don't know. That's a, that's a weird Muslim last name. All right. Uh, shortly after her marriage, Sanders was charged with rape, indecent assault, and forcible compulsion, among other charges. He is even accused of threatening to shoot one girl after assaulting her. Even though he is behind bars, the victim had been placed in protective custody. The girl's marriage to Sanders was her second marriage, and she's 17, as the first one didn't work out. So she was married at 14. This is her second marriage. So she was definitely married at like 12 or 13. The mosque in question is Masjid Utman Den Foyodo is connected to other extremist mosques and organizations, including that school. The sources say the weddings for the child marriages took place at the Majid Utman Den Foyodo are facilitated by the informal network of extremists that extends beyond the mosque congregation. The sources say the Islamist men seeking to marry girls traveled many hours away. The imam of the mosque was directly involved in scheduling and officiating the marriages for years. The sources say, wow, guys, I mean, this is happening where the Liberty Bell hangs. This is happening in Philly, man. I mean, my God, when, when this video came out of these kids talking about cutting off the heads of the infidel, then they started digging and they came up with this. Brian, child brides in America. Um, Not a shocker. Look at Michigan. Look at Minnesota. Look at Philly. It's happening all over this country. Look at Kentucky. Look at New Mexico. Look at Arizona. Look at upstate New York. 
Look at Oregon. It's happening all over America. Wake the hell up. I don't understand what it's going to take, man. I don't understand how men could die 75 years ago to keep this country free, to keep this world free from the greatest evil. And 75 years later, you would have pedophilia and transgenderism and homosexuality and abortions and Muslims marrying off little girls, 9, 10, 12, 14 years old. I mean, it, 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 I just don't understand how anyone uh, that fought that war could be proud of this nation today. But they're obviously Sick. not proud. CV, uh, what, what do we do to purge this activity? Because clearly, if it's happening in Philly, it's happening in New York, it's happening in Cali, it's happening everywhere. How the hell do we get control of this? Three words. Trump's extreme vetting. And the, another interesting thing about this story is that uh, these, these it, Muslims who are marrying these young kids, are, some of them are marrying older women who have jobs and telling them to quit their jobs so they can collect welfare. That's nice. And uh, another thing is, Another point I wanted to make was, remember how Giuliani turned around Manhattan with his broken windows theory? Some, you know, or people who j jump the turnstiles, just arrest them. And that, w that brought down the violent crimes as well, because the same people committing violent crimes were the same people jumping the turnstiles. Well, here you, you have the uh, authorities looking in to these mosques and actually um, they have warrants to go in there and investigate what's going on inside these mosques. And I'm sure they're going to find a little bit worse than marrying children. They're going to find a cache of weapons. They're going to find plots, terror plots, and things like that. Because if this is happening, you know it's worse. You know it's even worse. And well, you, know, you just had... Go ahead, Brian. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I was, no, was no, going to go say, you just, ha you just had the freaking feds on April 12th. Uh, they basically retra retracted uh, seeking any, um, basically seeking any uh, or prosecutory uh, procedures against the doctor and his wife that was in, I believe it was Michigan, that was, uh, that was doing this... Um, what is it, a female castration on these young little girls? Oh my god! I mean, I mean, it, 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 right? Gender mutilation, cutting their uh, clitoris off. I, it, it, it's sick, and our own, that's our own federal government. Our Department of Justice did not seek to take the case from the state of Minnesota when it had pertained to gender mutilation of young women in this country and for any of you lib turds listening that are saying what brian is reiterating is fake news i can tell you this i posted it from cnn so yeah it's, kiss it's, our ass listen if if you want to say it's fake news then you're saying that cnn is fake news because they put this story out and i will actually give them credit for that brian i will and, and i don't do that much but at least they at least they post this because he I think even the, those libtards said this is too much. It's unbelievable, man. Female, well, maybe a few maybe a few CNN uh, uh, employees have daughters. Yeah, right. You know all these uh, good liberals out there who are for women's rights and uh, the the in, the infant inside their their bodies is the woman's body it's not doesn't it's not a separate body or separate entity it's the women's body and you have no right to make laws that you know force women to give birth to uh something that they don't want to give birth to and they're all for women's rights meanwhile these muslims are castrating women and they're taking the last bit of dignity away from them. And if they could take their soul, they would. They don't have any problem with that. 
And by the way, you feminazis, just so you know, because I see a lot of these feminazis going to the women's rights march, and they get on a prayer rug and they pray. They want to be inclusive, and they want to give credit to the Muslim religion. Let me tell you something. If you were ever living under Sharia law, abortion would be outlawed. And if you ever got one, you would be put to death. Yep. Don't be naive. Let me tell you something. Rash Tlaib and Ilhan Omar are lying to you. They are using tequila in order to manipulate you. Yeah. This is this this is the sad part about the whole thing. Liberals are so fucking dumb. They don't even understand that they are being manipulated. They're the dumbest people you could ever meet. Even when you meet a smart liberal, and there are some that are book smart, but they just don't understand that their messaging is completely off the rails and wrong. Right. And they don't even understand that the believer, achiever, and patriot is the best friends they ever could have, but they don't even understand it. So they're trying to wipe us out and befriend those people who are much worse than we are, and the war between the two of them would get so ugly, you can't even imagine it. Yeah, that's because they, they lack the, the fight or flight um, you know, instinct. Uh, trigger inside yeah. their bodies, their instinct. You know what I mean? I mean, most people have an instinct to survive. And that yeah. instinct of survival and pre self-preservation uh, overtakes them with reason. Like, hey, these people want to kill me. Right. I guess maybe I won't. I won't be friends with them. I, I I won't. I won't see things their way. But not not the good liberals. No, the good liberals say, but they're people too. But not if you're a fully developed baby. You're not people. You're. A clump of cells, even though you have arms and limbs and, and eyes right. and a heartbeat, you're not a person. Or, or, or a 12-year-old girl in, in, in Michigan. You're not a person either. Just cut her clit off. I, I think you could trace their lack of survival instinct. You could trace it back to the arrival of the pill on the scene because that was when they started losing interest in macho, uh, testosterone imbued men and started going after the the weak chinned little wimpy wimpy girly boy chinless wonders yeah. did you guys did you guys see the uh story of the girl in the netherlands 12 year old girl they assisted her on suicide no yeah, i saw that sick tell me yeah. about it i didn't hear it well well she was she raped was... she was raped by uh two men when she was young and she didn't, she, I saw some of the writings. It's heartbreaking. She said she felt like a body without a soul. Wow. You know, she didn't feel like herself. Well, the government in the Netherlands, it's, uh, assisted in, in killing her. Yep. S -s assisted suicide. She, she suffered. Yeah. It was reported that she suffered from years of depression. Um, and all types of other stuff. And it, they, I'll tell you what, man, Denmark, the Netherlands, uh, they're, they're, it's sick over there, man, with that stuff. I mean, some of these elderly people that, that they're euthanizing, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a real sick thing over there. They're so sick. They'd rather recommend suicide to a person like that than Jesus Christ. That's how fucking satanic they are. That's a great point. I mean, for God's sakes, when you say, hey, you know what? There's a better way. There's God. Yeah. It, you know, right. They're, they're, they're right. A belief in a higher power, belief in something bigger than yourself, a belief of redemption or or yeah. or, 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 or or renewal and, and starting over right. they're your like, life. They're like, you know yeah, what I mean? They're like, yeah, you're right. You have no soul. We'll help kill you. Right. What, what do we tell what do we tell drug addicts that, that seek help in this country? Right. We tell we, 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 we direct them in believing in something bigger than themselves. People that have no belief in something bigger than themselves have no self-worth. They have no they, they, they feel like, well, if there's nothing if, if, if there's nothing out there, then what does it matter? Yeah, that's true. That's true. And the, and, you know, the story of Jesus Christ, when when lost souls hear the story of Jesus, they say, my God, look what he went through in order to 
uh, uh, you know, for for my Lord to forgive me for my sins. Yeah. Right. I must I, mean I, something. I must yeah. mean something. You know, I mean something I, to someone. Sometimes they they don't feel like they mean anything to themselves, but it but but it, it because and because a lot of times they feel that they don't mean anything to anybody else around them, even though they have families that love them and families that sh- that shower them with 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 love and and forgiveness and all types of other things. Sometimes it's not enough. Right. We get, we derive our self importance and self love from our parents mostly. If we're if we were raised by parents that didn't love us, we'd be like that, you know, girl who feels like, feels like she has no soul. But God even says in the Bible that, you know, he's a father to the fatherless. So even a person like that can look to God as a father figure who loves them. And that's what that's where they can derive a lot of self respect. Listen, um for anybody that's listening to us this week, first of all, remember everybody that sacrificed for your freedoms because this is a week like no other. And you need to remember those that stormed those beaches in Normandy. I can't imagine. I can't imagine what those men were feeling like in those amphibious vehicles when they pulled up to those beaches confronting the Nazis. You know, we all have to confront our own demons every day, and that's part of it. But for all you folks that listen to us from Connecticut and Long Island, Rhode Island, you know where to hear us on Sundays. But for those of you who don't, come to freedomondeck.com from 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Just click the Listen Live, and you can hear us there. Or if you want to, you can go to 949newsnow.com, click Listen Live. You can hear us this weekend. We're going to have Xander Gibb. We're going to have Matt Margolis on with us. He wrote The Worst President in History, the legacy of Barack Obama, and he's a contributor to PJ Media. CV, after what we just talked about, I asked you to play this a couple of weeks ago. We didn't want to play it, but I'm deciding I'm making an executive order right now. <laughs> play Michael Savage's motivational speech, and that'll kind of connect all we were talking about to end the show. You got Everybody it. have a good night. I'll talk to you guys later. Over and out. I intend to make this day forward the first day of the rest of my life. We can change our lives. You say, well, what's wrong with your life, Michael? Well, it's not that there's anything wrong with my life, but it's not what I want it to be. I don't feel that I'm inspiring people in the way I want to inspire them. You see, you can inspire through hate. You can inspire through love, hope, humor the positives I look at the history of the world and I look at the world today and I realize that if we don't inspire each other through positive attributes love hope and humor we're gonna descend into the barbarism of the left and the barbarism of Isis you like me to be hard you like me to be tough you like me to give you the breaking news you like me to be cynical you like me to be analytical you like me to give you stuff that you don't hear anyone else I get that But there's a limit to that. There's a lot of area beyond all of that. I think of Christmas. Christianity is the religion of peace. Christianity is the true religion of peace. Turn the other cheek. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. These are messages that come from Christianity. What can you do in an age of deceit and lies and terror? You can go to church again. However unneeding you think you really are, you know in your heart that there's something missing in you. You know that you crave something greater because the human being is not a dog. We are unique creatures and we need something different than the bear, the dog, the snake, and the eagle. What is that thing that we need? It's that thing called God. The media has promulgated the idea and promoted the idea that we only need food and fornication. And so when people are empty, that's what they seek. And when they're really empty, what happens? They become drug addicts. They start with marijuana and they end up with heroin, crack, you name it. As God has been driven out of America, drugs have entered America. What does an empty soul look to do? An empty soul looks to fill itself. Just as an empty vessel needs to be filled with a liquid, 
to be complete. An empty human being needs to fill itself to be complete. And how does it fill itself? I know, again, many of you will laugh because you're cynical. <laughs> it's through those things I'm talking about, inspiration. Do you think a musician can play one day without inspiration from somewhere? The greatest artists in the history of the world were not drug addicts. They were usually God addicts. Look at the greatest art in history. You'll find most of them were super religious people who literally saw God in their living room and then took the power of God and that was transmitted through the paintbrush or through that piece of marble. How could a man like Rodin take a piece of inert stone and inside that stone see the essence of a human form and sculpt from that block of inert stone of marble the portrait of a human being that looks so real. A hundred years later I go and look at them in the museum and literally inside that carved eye I can see the person. How is that possible? How? It's a different show than I've ever done in my 21 years because each day to me, I must tell you, I see as my last day, my last day on earth.